Hello, sixth graders. This is Mr. Burns. I'm the science teacher in the Boathouse. I'd like to welcome also the Lighthouse students and Wacka House students today. Um, today we're going to focus on observations, uh, specifically making observations while doing experiments. Uh, as you go through this video, please remember to write down all of the notes that are highlighted in yellow. So as we go from slide to slide, anything that's highlighted in yellow you want to put into your science notebook. Next, I'd like you to get your science notebook out and open up to your table of contents. When you're in your table of contents, we're going to update it with page 12. Uh, if you want to put in today's date, which is October 12th, so under the date column, you can put in 10-12-20. Uh, the topic for today is observation notes. Page number is 12. It'll look just like you see on the screen. When you finish, I want you to turn in your notebook and go to page 12 and title it Observation Notes. Okay, so observations. Uh, when we're doing experiments, we're continually making observations during and after the experiment. Um, ex observations must be objective. In other words, observations avoid opinions, bias, and specific points of view. When we're making observations, you use your five senses to gather information around you. During the experiment, what do you see? What can you hear? What can you smell? What can you taste and feel? And, and during some experiments, we can't use all of those senses. Sometimes it's not safe to taste things or touch things or smell things. But we're trying to use as many senses as we can to learn more about the, the results of the experiment. Observations should be accurate. Observations are an exact report of what your senses tell you. So there's two different types of observations that we're going to focus in on. The first type of observation is called a quantitative observation. These are observations using numbers or measurements. When we're doing an experiment, sometimes uh, we make observations that include numbers or measurements and we call those quantitative. Now some examples of what I'm talking about is there are 30 students in the classroom or there are 15 tables in the classroom. My pencil is four inches long. I live two miles from school. So those are all observations but one of the things that they have in common is that they have numbers or measurements in it and that's what makes them quantitative. When you say there's 30 students in the classroom, that is a number. You're observing that there are 30 different students in the classroom. Or when you say my pencil is four inches long, that's a measurement, because you are measuring the pencil. So anytime an observation takes place that involves numbers, we classify that as a quantitative observation. The second type of observation is the qualitative observation. Uh, these are observations without numbers or measurements. Let me show you some examples. So let's look at some examples of qualitative observations. Blue chairs. I'm using my sense of sight to be able to see the chairs. Sticky tables. I'm using my sense of touch. Taste sour. I'm using my sense of taste. Smells like smoke. I'm using my sense of smell. These are all examples of qualitative observations because you don't see any numbers or measurements included with these observations. Okay, so a question I get sometimes regarding these two terms is, how do I remember the difference between these two? Because when I listen to the pronunciation of them, qualitative and quantitative, they sound very similar. And then when you take the time and kind of compare the spellings, the words are spelled very similar too, which makes it difficult to remember which one is which because they sound similar in pronunciation and they look similar with their spelling. So a couple tricks I use. Um, 
when I look at the word quantitative, okay, the root word for quantitative is quantity. So some of you may have heard of the word quantity before, and quantity uh, is essentially how much or how many. And if you're talking about how much or how many, that's, that's numbers. And that's qu the quantitative observation. Remember, a quantitative observation uh, is observations that involve numbers or measurements. And quantity is how much or how many. The other trick I use that I like is um, the letter N. So the letter N is in the word quantitative. And N stands for numbers. So that's kind of a trick I use. Um, there is no letter N in the other word, qualitative. So there's no numbers there. But with the word quantitative, you see the letter N, and that stands for numbers, and that's the observation that involves numbers or measurements. Possibly one of those tricks will help you remember the difference between these two words. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about today is inferences. And, in, and the word inference is probably familiar to you because you would use that in reading class or sometimes in your English class. But we're going to look at it from a science perspective. So in inference in science, it's a statement that explains an observation and can be a possible explanation. All right, so let's look at some examples of inferencing. Um, so sometimes I'm outside and I can smell smoke and I infer that there must be a fire nearby um, and that's why I can smell that smoke. So that's a possible explanation as to why I can smell the smoke. Another example is maybe you're outside it, side and you your friend comes outside to do something with you and you notice that uh, he or she has a big winter coat on. Well, you would infer that it's cold outside. That's why they're wearing the winter coat. Uh, a, a last example is Frank's stomach, stomach is growling. Well, you infer that he must be hungry, and that's why his stomach's growling. So that's a possible explanation for Frank's stomach is growling.